Hello everyone, welcome back you all in this new video. Here we are going to design strap foundation by using this excel sheet. In another way you can say that design of combined foundation with strap beam by using this excel sheet. So first of all try to understand the problem statement. In problem statement there is given two columns having the cross section of 240 by 240 and 300 by 300 in mm. Both of the columns are subjected to the intensity of the load as 300 kN and 500 kN respectively. The center to center distance between these two columns is given as 4 meter. As you can see here, the left hand side of column is 240 by 240 and right side hand column is having the section size as 300 by 300. Both of the columns having the center to center distance as 4000 mm. In meter, it is 4 meter. The bearing capacity of the soil at the proposed land is 100 kN per meter square. We have to design a combined footing with a strap beam being width of the foundation as 2 meter. Here we have given the limitation to decide the width of the foundation. So this width of the foundation you cannot take more than of 2 meter or less than of this 2 meter. You have to consider this width of the foundation as 2 meter only. The material that we have to use for the design of this strap foundation as M20 grade of concrete and AP415 grade of steel. So with all of this given data we have to design this strap foundation by using this excel sheet. Now we will complete this design in a few important steps. In the first step we will find out the width of the foundation and length of the foundation required. Thereafter we will find out the overall depth required for this foundation along with the how much the reinforcement required along the length and width of the foundations. Then we will perform the one way shear check. After satisfying the one way shear check we will go to design the strap beam. And for designing of the strap beam we need to find out the shear force along the span of the beam at different points as well as the bending moment along the span of the beam at different important points. Once you get all these values for the shear force and bending moment you have to proceed for the design of the beam for its flexural design. And we have to decide the overall depth of the beam and the reinforcement required at the top of the beam and reinforcement required at the bottom of the beam. After the flexural design of the strap beam, we will move to design this beam for the shear force. And for that we are finding the how much the reinforcement required along the span of the beam as a shear reinforcement. So in this way we are going to complete this design by using this excel sheet. Now before of starting the design, it is important for you all to know how to use this excel sheet. So you have to edit the values in yellow cells only and in white cells the formulas are present. You don't need to edit the values in white cells. White cell will adjust the value automatically. You only have to edit the values in yellow cells. And this cell will suggest the value what value you should take. And that will be the save. So that suggestion you will get from this kind of cells. And these green cells will give the checks whether that checks are passing or not. Now let's start the design. So first of all we have to look at the problem statement. So in problem statement we have given that the material we have to use as M20 grade and FE415 grade of steel. So just go back and put this value here. So grade of concrete here we have given that M20 grade of concrete we have to use and grade of steel is what FE415 that's a good thing. And what is the SBC of the soil? So in the problem statement we have given that the SBC of the soil is 100 kN per meter square. So that I am going to put here as 100 kN per meter square as the SBC of the soil. Then the load that is coming to this first column as C1. So how much that load is that we need to put here in this P1 value and how much the load to the second column that we have to put here. So both of the things we will get from the problem statement. So what is the load? So the load here it is given what 300 kN and 500 kN. So that both of the intensity of the load we have to put here as P1 as 300 kN and P2 as 500 kN. What is the center to center distance between these two columns? So center to center distance between these two columns are 4 meter. So just go to put this value as 4 meter center to center distance between these two columns. Thereafter we have to put the cross section size of column 1 and cross section size of the column 2. So the first column is having the section size as 240 by 240. And second column is having the section size of 300 by 300. So that I am going to put here as 240 by 240 and 300 by 300. This is what in plan section size of your column. 
how much the clear cover you would like to consider that you have to put here so i am going to consider 50 mm clear cover you have to assume the diameter of bar so i am going to assume the diameter of bar of 16 mm here drop down list of all the possible diameter of bars are available if you want to consider as 12 mm diameter of bar if you want to consider as 16 mm diameter of bar if you want to consider as 20 mm diameter of bar every diameter of bars are actually available here any of uh, your required diameter of bar you can select from this drop down list after all of that uh, here we need to assume the self weight of the foundation so by percentage we are considering the self weight of the foundation we know so that's why i'm going to consider 10% of the load coming from both of the column so it is going to become 80 kN then what width of the footing you would like to consider so in our problem statement it is given that the width of the foundation should be limited to 2 meter only so that i am going to put here as 2 meter now after deciding the width of your foundation the quadratic equation is going to be formed and your excel sheet is going to solve this quadratic equation and it is suggesting that what should be the length of your first foundation this l1 we have to find and this is going to be suggested by your excel sheet so this excel sheet will tell you the length of first footing should be either 6.16 or 2.14 amongst this two value you have to choose only one value for finally the length of this first foundation so here as you know that the center to center distance between these two column is 4 meter so it is not possible to take 6.16 as a length of this first foundation so only the option we are getting to choose the value as 2.14 and one more thing you know very well whenever we are going to decide the size of your foundation we are going to consider slightly more than of the required value so here we are getting 2.14 is the recommendation to decide the length of the footing so i am going to consider it as 2.2 meter so this is the length of your first foundation and sheet will automatically going to calculate the length of the second foundation so second foundation is also having the length of 2.2 meter with this calculation we have to proceed to find out the how much the overall depth of the foundation is required so here depth of the foundation overall required as 175.88 uh, mm this is what the recommendation but if you are going to provide this overall depth so on later stage under the punching shear check under the one way shear checks there is a possibility to get the failure that's why what i am going to do i am going to consider slightly more value to make them safe under the shears so i am going to take here overall depth as 450 mm so 450 mm is the overall depth now i would like to provide the 12 mm diameter of bar this is what along the width of the footing this much area of the reinforcement is required and along the length of the footing this much area of reinforcement is required but this is what the design requirement this requirement is going to be compared with uh, the minimum requirement so if you are getting along the width uh, more requirement than that of the minimum requirement so you have to provide this reinforcement and if this reinforcement is less than that of the minimum reinforcement in that situation you have to provide the minimum reinforcement at least so in any case your reinforcement should not be less than of this minimum requirement but you don't need to worry about that sheet will take care about this so here i am going to just decide the what diameter of bar i would like to consider so here i would like to consider 12 mm diameter of bar drop down list is there i am showing all the diameters of bars i am going to consider 12 mm diameter of bars along the width so spacing of the reinforcement required as 209 so you know very well the spacing should be less than of the required so here i am going to consider spacing as 200 now here along the length again i am going to consider 12 mm diameter of bar so with this diameter of bar spacing is 209 again i am going to provide 200 mm center to center spacing so provided percentage of reinforcement along the length and along the width it is we are getting as 0.14% and it is more than that of the 0.12% which is recommendation made by your is456 so we are going to provide more reinforcement than that of uh, the minimum reinforcement as suggested by your is456 so we are on safe side so with all of this design further we are proceeding to do the one way shear check so here one way shear check we are getting what no shear reinforcement is necessary it means that our design our available percentage of reinforcement as well as 
provided depth of your foundation is safe for the one way shear so we don't need to provide the shear reinforcement if it is failing in one way shear then we need to provide the shear reinforcement so here no shear reinforcement is necessary we can proceed further for the design of the strap beam what does mean by this strap beam the beam which is going to connect these two foundation we are going to call it as what strap beam so we have to design this strap beam so first of all we need to find out the how much the shear force along the span of the beam at different important points as well as how much the bending moment along the span of the beam at different important points but you don't need to worry about that sheet will take care about i will calculate uh, the shear force at different important points and uh, also it is going to calculate the bending moment at different important points and accordingly sheet is going to draw the shear force diagram along the length of the beam and also it is going to draw the bending moment diagram along the span of the beam so here only we have to proceed for the flexural design of this beam how much the reinforcement required or at the top of the beam how much the reinforcement required at the bottom of the beam and how much the overall depth of the beam is required so with the calculation the depth required for the beam is 469 mm approximately and if you are going to add the effective cover so overall depth required for the beam is what 527 so for the safety concern i am going to consider the overall depth of the beam as 700 mm so available effective depth is going to become 642 now area of minimum reinforcement should be at the top and bottom should be what 716.87 mm square this much the area of reinforcement should be now in respect of the bending moment you are getting at the top and bottom of the beam so in respect of that maximum negative and maximum positive moments so here it is what the reinforcement required at the top 1446.30 mm square area of reinforcement required at the top of the beam and at the bottom of the beam 748 so you have to compare these two values with this value so this first at the top should be more than that of at least minimum reinforcement we are getting but if it is less than then you have to provide this minimum reinforcement at least and here also the same thing for the bottom 748 we are getting and 716 is the minimum reinforcement requirement so here demand is more than of the minimum requirement so we are going to provide the at least design requirement so these all things were going to be considered by the sheet itself you only have to just decide the what diameter of bar you would like to consider so here i am going to provide 25 mm diameter of bar at the top face if i am going to provide 20 mm diameter of bar it is asking to provide 4.6 number of bars but here i am not uh, willing to provide uh, this much number of bars five number of bars i am not uh, interested to provide so what i am going to do i am going to provide here as what i am going to provide uh, 25 mm diameter of bar 25 mm diameter of bar is it is suggesting to provide 2.95 number of bars so i am going to provide three number of bars drop down options are there to you can choose the number of bars so i would like to provide three number of bars now here at the bottom how many number of bars are required uh, with the 16 mm diameter 3.72 so i would like to provide here as what four numbers okay 3.72 so at least we have to provide four 2.95 we have to provide at least what three number of bars so provided reinforcement at the top 3 bars of 25 mm dia and at the bottom 4 bars of 16 mm dia so with this the percentage of reinforcement available at the top and bottom both the things you are getting from here now i am going to design the beam for the shear force or for the shear so with the calculation here we are getting what design for the shear reinforcement and under the column c2 it is suggesting that design for the shear reinforcement it means that we need to provide the shear reinforcement right so what i need to do i will have to provide 8 mm diameter of bar two leg the vertical stirrup under the column c1 what requirement is there if i am going to provide 8 mm diameter of bar two leg the vertical stirrup so spacing requirement we are getting first 467 approximately minimum 181 and last in no any case your spacing should be more than of 300 so amongst all these three values you have to consider the minimum one so what we are getting the minimum one 181 so i would like to provide 175 you have to round down this value by 25 mm so lower value will become what 175 here we are getting 181 so next lower value is going to become 175 
so provide two leg do vertical stirrup 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 175 mm center to center under the column c1 similarly under the column c2 here design for the shear reinforcement 8 mm diameter of bar two leg do vertical stirrup spacing these are the requirement for the spacing you have to consider minimum of all these three values so what minimum we are getting again 175 So we need to provide under the column C2 two leg do vertical stirrup 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 175 mm center to center. So here you can design this strap footing by just giving some important values and you are getting your result. Okay? So this sheet will also give you final detail. So here what we are getting along the length of the footing 12 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 200 mm center to center. Along the width of the footing, 12 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 200 mm center to center, and the same design is applicable for this footing also. And for the strap beam, we have to provide three bars of 25 mm diameter at its top and four bars of 16 mm diameter at its bottom. So here, what we are getting, three bars of 25 mm diameter at its top. So here, four it is showing, but actually you have to consider it as what three bars of 25 mm dia. And bottom, what we are getting. Four bars of 16 mm dia. Okay, if you are taking the section as AA, so this is the value for the section first two leg 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 175 mm center to center. Likewise, under the column C2, I am going to consider the section BB, and for this section BB, what we are getting three bars of 25 mm dia at its top. Here it is showing four, but you have to consider it as you have to consider this value as three number of bars as 25. And at the bottom, four bars of 16 mm dia we have to provide. And under the column C2, the same shear reinforcements are there as a two leg 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 175 mm center to center. So in this way, you have to complete the design by using this Excel sheet as well as you have to complete the detailing for this design result. Hope that you all understood this complete design by using this Excel sheet. and thank you very much you all for watching this video if you are interested in the field of structural design so we are continuously uploading this kind of videos so please subscribe this channel and share this video with all of your friends and press the bell icon to get every notification